Let's go to an old, let's go to a young Hassan, an old Hassan. First stream since insurrection, forgot I had Marcia Jones, the 27 year old woman from Birmingham. Marcia Jones, the 27 year old woman from Birmingham, Alabama, who got indicted on a manslaughter charge and was taken into custody. Why? Because she was pregnant when she got shot. The shooter, on the other hand, went free. Wait, what? The absolute state of Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's rewind that real quick. So Marcia Jones, a 27 year old pregnant woman and Ebony Jameson get into an altercation at the parking lot of a dollar store. Ebony pulls out a gun and shoots Marcia. Ebony is arrested at first, but then further investigation shows that Marcia, the pregnant woman, is actually responsible for the altercation and the escalation leading to her being shot. An officer involved in the investigation deems that the only victim of the incident is Marcia's five month old fetus. <laughs> That's right, baby. The only victim is the pregnant child, is the baby. The fetus was dependent on its mother to try to keep it from harm, and she should seek out unnecessary physical altercations. Now, I totally understand not charging the shooter if Marche was the aggressor and Ebony shot her in self-defense, but putting someone in jail with a $50,000 bond because they were pregnant when they got shot has to be absolute insanity. Insanity, unless you think a person is no longer a full Thank person the moment that they get pregnant. Stance. After conception, you the woman becomes something different different, Ask like a baby incubator who's criminally liable for what happens to their fetus. This has the capacity to set a terrifying precedent that would essentially criminalize miscarriages. But apparently, we have already been doing exactly that. The National Advocates for Pregnant Women identified 413 criminal and civil cases across 44 states involving the arrest, detentions, and the deprivations of pregnant women's liberty between 1973 and 2005. The NAWP said that it is aware of a further 250 cases since 2005. Wow, now this study is more than six years old at this point, baby. but the findings are terrifying. There's a case in Ohio where a judge kept a woman in prison to prevent her from having an abortion. Another case in Oregon where a woman was locked in a psychiatric ward for refusing a doctor's recommendation on getting additional testing for gestational diabetes. A DC court order that forced a critically ill woman to undergo a C-section despite her personal objections, which ended with both the baby and the woman dying. And this even happens in New York, apparently, where in 2008, a pregnant woman was charged with manslaughter for getting in a car accident. A woman in Arkansas gave birth at home to twins who were born dead, so she panicked and tried to hide the bodies. A medical examiner determined that the babies had died in the womb and that she had no illegal substances in her body, and yet she still awaits trial with a $50,000 bond for two counts of abuse of a corpse which carries a minimum of three years in jail. I mean, what's next? Should we start placing pregnant women under citizen's arrest if we see them drinking a glass of wine? Should we start jailing women for not taking their pregnancy gummy vitamins? For shoveling snow outside or not staying in bed all day? I mean, these are all potentially harmful to a fetus. So now they're technically attempts at manslaughter, right? And that's precisely the issue with prosecuting pregnancy laws. Annually, there are nearly 1 million known yes. pregnancies that end in miscarriage or stillbirth. We would have to jail or at the very least prosecute 1 million women annually. But I guess some people don't take issue with this future. In case you do, please share this video with your friends and leave us. Um, that was one of them. There's another one. Hold on. I mean, I've been covering this uh, for a very long time, but hey, listen, there you go. Stealing from Woke Bay. Yep, that is right. We should cut out the middleman and make pregnancy illegal. I agree. I agree, actually. Uh, you're right. 15 months hassle. Uh, no sex for anybody uh, means no pregnancy for anybody, if you think about it. Wait, dude, I don't even remember this video. What the fuck? I don't even remember this video, chat. This could be anything. The grace of God. The grace of God that causes men to be born again. It causes men to walk in newness of life. You cannot muster that up apart from the grace of God. You must cry out to him for mercy this morning. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, have mercy on me, a sinner. The last remaining abortion clinic in Missouri says it may have to stop operations this week. It would be the first time since the Supreme Court's 1973 decision in Roe v. Wade that a state would be without an abortion clinic. Hey, do you ever feel like the world is pretty awful and that America is getting more and more backwards with cruel abortion laws? Meanwhile, your Facebook news feed is cluttered with right-wing lies? Well, it's because it is! <laughs>
According to a Media Matters study, right-wing media have dominated abortion-related coverage with sensationalized anti-choice rhetoric and harmful misinformation, which we already knew about. But on Facebook, anti-abortion misinformation is consistently outperforming all other coverage of abortion-related news as well. So when you feel like your distant relatives, your friends back home, or that one suspicious co-worker who snuck in a friend request are pumping out wild stories about how Democrats support infanticide, it's probably because 63% of the Hank Pecker voice Facebook was still back then. The Hank Pecker voice was still there back then, for the record. Like, straight up. I was still doing Hank Pecker, even, even all the way back in, like, fucking... Who was your editor? Did you do this yourself? I used to write these and then I used to write these, research them, and then I would send production notes to my editor over Google Docs. So like, I would be like, here, pop this quote up and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Or like put this graphic over it. Is it worth it to watch your old TYT videos to be more informed or is most of that info outdated? None of the information on my old TYT videos is outdated. All the videos that I did, um, all the videos I did, during uh the breakdown on the young turks was one million percent unfortunately completely relevant and completely prescient i'm watching it right now where we can watch it right now and and go over it and you'll understand because nothing has changed all of those same fucking issues are still he actually researched uh lol w yeah um i still do i still research shit when i'm talking about it you think i just like it'd be funnier it would be, in my opinion, it'd be more impressive if I was able to literally fucking describe to you things that are happening with, like, all of this extra information without any research. If I just, like, made it up. I think that would be more impressive. But thank you for thinking that. Yeah, I'm just making all this shit up. And it happens to be true. They have just gotten worse. What do you mean, Kopege? They have gotten worse. Why are there so many LOL W watchers right now? We got a lot of LOL W Andys in here. Anyway, let's continue. So you read, Swift never. Most interaction on abortion came from right-leaning pages. And two anti-abortion websites, LifeNews.com and LiveAction, are responsible for almost 30% of those viral links. Uh, by the way, I took the liberty and went on LifeNews.com's Facebook page and amidst the sea of this fetus is actually a baby and the Stop the Baby Holocaust posts, I has found this incredible pens, video pens. titled I'm back This is the Sign Language Russia for Abortion. And and Just heartbreaking. Cycle Just Thank heartbreak. you for making reality bearable. But thank Tell God. Me. LifeNews.com earned more than 3 million Facebook interactions on abortion-related coverage in the month of April, whereas fake news media CNN.com got 267,000. Thank God they also put up uh, 58 of the top links on Facebook about abortion in Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro's publication was trailing at number two with 21 top links. Let's check in with the Daily Wire and how they talk about abortion. You know what? 60 million babies have been killed. Okay, abortion has been legal for 46 years and 60 million babies have been killed. <laughs> Yikes, dude. Abortion doesn't kill babies, it prevents babies from happening. 90% of- Why are you so- wait, someone in the chat said, why are you so angry? You can't even have kids? I hate to break it to you, Chatter, but I'm your father. Okay, I can't find it right now, but... I'm literally your dad. I fucked your mom. 15 years ago. I had kids with your mom. I.e. One year gigahaz. I'm your dad. Step outside for some cigarettes. And I never came back. Bro, that was like your fifth mom joke in the, the past half hour. Kid. None of these are jokes. Every time I say I fucked your mom, I actually had sexual intercourse with your mom. Abortions are performed in the first trimester, and that thing certainly is not a baby. More like a gummy bear at that point. But wait, there's more. I pointed out that rapists... Um, use abortion months. to cover That's their tracks me through these and that things. abortion <laughs> restrictions can actually protect uh, rape victims whereas abortion clinics often exploit rape victims and can cause rape to continue what the f if a 12 year old is raped by her father and the father takes her to get an abortion the evidence of the crime will be destroyed and he will go on molesting his victim for years if however the child is born his crime will be discovered and she'll be rescued from the abuse yes the only way, boys. Oh, dude, I forgot about that. The only way, the only way that you can figure out if a rape happened is if you force the fucking victim of the rape to carry a pregnancy to term. There's no other way to figure this out. Dude, Matt Walsh has been wilding out for many years, by the way. Like, it's kind of crazy that, that, that he is just like the most psychopathic person. So consistently, though. 
Again, the debate perverts will literally look to that and go, well, I, uh, well that's morally consistent. He's, he's more consistent. That's the only fine. way to know Take if a 12-year-old has been raped is if that 12-year-old is then forced to carry the pregnancy to term. Very cool, Matt Walsh, you absolute sicko. This is the smoothest brained way of looking at this entire situation. This is how a child would actually think of this. There is a, a massive backlog of untested rape kits in this country, guy. and you think the only way to figure out if someone's been raped is if they carry the pregnancy to term? What the hell is wrong with these people? Look, I'm in favor of having a philosophical conversation about the autonomy of the host, or even the personhood of the fetus, none of which should mean that the government prevents you from getting an abortion, by the way. But these are the kinds of insane arguments you hear from wow. respectable right-wing news sources on why these draconian abortion laws are actually good. Abortion is a wedge issue for the right. Which means it's something that they use to radicalize their base and separate their voters from the Democrats. This is why there have been more abortion restrictions enacted between 2011 and 2013 than the entire previous decade. Wedge issues are social and cultural problems both parties can focus. Task and purpose should have ripped this style and haircut. Pretty soy delivery, brother. Dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I guess that soy was sexy, I guess then. Okay, this shit this shit would fucking bang, okay? Th these were getting like fucking 3 million views. Like this is when I first popped off on Facebook. I was popping focus the on fuck without off. wide sweeping material consequences like Medicare for all or anti-imperialism, which will impact the bottom line of many powerful American industries like the insurance industry or the military industrial complex. But if you're curious as That's why it's always funny. This video is from 2019, by the way. Like or 2017, 2018, like there's plenty of videos that you can uh, point to from even back then where like the motherfuckers who were literally like back then there were dudes who were like Nazis who now think that they're like social Democrats or whatever, turning around and telling me I'm not woke enough for them. And it's like, really dude. I mean, it, come on. I've been doing this for so long. Like I've, I've been saying the exact same shit for so many years. The why people are still split on this matter or why Republicans continue with unfavorable punitive measures on abortions in a desperate attempt to overturn Roe v. Wade, this is it. It's because there are outlets tasked with lying to your relatives and they're absolutely blowing up on Facebook no matter what conservatives try to tell you about censorship. I'm Sam Piker. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and inform them. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Join the conversation. And this has been The Breakdown. You ever feel nostalgic? Take a trip down memory lane watching these videos. I feel that that way. Listen to my own music. No, I mean, it appeals to less online people, so it's probably better agitprop in a way. Yeah, no, I, um, I did a I did a decent job at like, I, I think I did a decent job of like cutting agitated propaganda for uh, Sub -Han BB. for for boomers for the most part. Like, hold on, let me see if I can find uh, all the other ones. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go through all the other ones right now to see if I can find them. Uh, Mississippi lawmaker, abortion, punches wife, pastor advocate for abortion, death penalty caught. Wait, what is this one? I've done so many of these. I look ridiculous in this one. Oh my God. One year baby. Oh my fucking God, dude. We have a severe problem in Protestant circles with sexual abuse, uh, not just by pastors, uh, but by members of the church, uh, and a severe problem with how churches frequently handle disclosures of abuse. This is former Southern Baptist pastor Stephen Bratton, father of seven. He used to be a pastor at the Grace Family Baptist Church in Houston. And much like many Southern Baptists, he's a vocal advocate for the death penalty for women who seek abortions and doctors who perform abortions. Which makes sense, after all, well, here's a YouTube video I found of his church. We also have a list of core values that we emphasize here at GFBC. Those core values are the sufficiency of scripture, when we speak about the sufficiency of Scripture, we're referring to the fact that the Bible is the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Why are we talking about this handsome fellow today? Well, aside from his advocacy, Bratton is being accused of the continuous sexual abuse of a child after allegedly engaging in sexual intercourse multiple times a day or several times a week. Now, on April 8th, Bratton sat on a hearing for the failed Texas abortion bill and said, government. whoever authorizes or commits murder is guilty. They're guilty already in a court that is far more weighty than what is here in Texas. Turns out, 
Courts in Texas might find him guilty of some other things. Only a month later, on May 16th, fellow pastors in the church contacted the police after Bratton allegedly confessed to them that he had been committing the abuse of minors. You look like a Brandon in this video. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> Aaron Wright, another pastor in the church, gave a public statement on the matter claiming that Stephen Braddon was in contradiction to the faith and in contradiction to their church. Except, is he really? Because it turns out molesting children is kind of a big problem in Southern Baptist churches. With nearly 15 million members, the Southern Baptist Convention is the largest Protestant denomination in the United States. Now it is facing a reckoning of its own over sexual abuse. A Houston Chronicle investigation found hundreds of clergy or staff allegedly committed abuse or misconduct over two decades. Now this Houston Chronicle investigation showed that at least 700 people had reported being sexually abused by Southern Baptist church leaders and volunteers. So I don't want to go. Bro, sometimes I need to do this where I just like literally fucking, I just literally play all my old videos. You know what I mean? Seven months has. I, I need to take a, I need to take a step away. I just like play shit that I've already said a million times over in the past against the good pastor who said Stephen Braddon's actions were in contradiction with how the church does business, but it sure seems like that's exactly how the church does business. This week, delegates of Southern Baptist churches approved changes for the first time to make it easier to expel churches that cover up sexual abuse cases. This convention, ironically, is happening in Alabama, by the way, a state where lawmakers recently passed a near total abortion ban that doesn't even make exceptions for rape or incest, meaning that once the law is in effect, if a member or a pastor in your Southern Baptist clergy rapes you, you'll have to carry that pregnancy the term, and then to make matters worse, that rapist will likely be able to legally co-parent the child. What a dichotomy this is, guys. I, I love that so many Americans think that we are exceptional, but in fact, this is truly one of the most backwards nations on the planet where we routinely legislate this kind of brutality. Like imagine criticizing other nations for how they treat women over in like Middle Eastern nations and whatnot, and then advocating for these kinds of laws here. Just an insane country, man, where rapist pastors can get on a soapbox and advocate to murder women who seek out abortions. But of course, Thanks, we're still one of the greatest nations on earth, right?